Here we're going to look at a nice problem that I found on the International Math Olympiad 1986 shortlist. And this actually uses a trick that I'm not sure I've ever used on the channel before, so I'm pretty psyched to show you guys. Okay, so we want to find all functions from non-negative real numbers to non-negative real numbers such that these three conditions are satisfied. So we've got f of x times f of y times f of y equals f of x plus y. Then next we know f evaluated at 2 is 0. And then we know f of x is not equal to 0 if x is between 0 and 2, including 0 but not including 2. Obviously you cannot include 2 by this previous condition. Okay, I'm not really going to give any hints, we're just going to jump into the solution. So we really want to leverage this second purple dot condition first. That's because we already know a value for the function. We know f of 2 equals 0. So what we'll probably want to do is somehow introduce f of 2 into this guy right here. That's actually not super hard to do. If y is equal to 2, then we're good to go. So let's maybe set y equal to 2. But then if we set y equal to 2, we have f of x plus 2 here. So maybe we could set x equal to something that'll cancel out that plus 2. And we can do that very easily. We'll also set x equal to x minus 2. And that immediately tells us that this x value has to be bigger than or equal to 2. Because if it weren't, we'd be plugging in a negative number into the function, but that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so let's see what this red dot condition becomes under these substitutions. So over here on the left hand side, we have f evaluated at x minus 2 times f evaluated at 2, all times f evaluated at 2, like that. So that's what we've got from here and here because we set y equal to 2. Then over there on the right hand side, we have f evaluated at x minus 2 plus 2 because we've substituted x for x minus 2 and then y for 2 like we had before. Okay, but next up we can see that this f of 2 is equal to 0 by the purple condition. And then that tells us that f of x is equal to 0 given that x started off being bigger than or equal to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as x is on the half open interval from 2 to infinity, including 2. So we know that f is 0 on that huge interval. Now we just need to figure out what it is right here. So now we want to take an arbitrary x value from our domain and then a y value from this interval down here that we haven't pinned down yet. So let's maybe do that. So let's let x be on the interval from 0 to infinity, including 0. And then we'll let y be on the interval from 0 to 2, including 0, but not 2. And again, just to reiterate, this is the place right here where we do not know what the function looks like. We know what the function looks like on the rest of the positive real number line, but not there. Okay, now let's just look at our functional equation in this case. So our functional equation is going to give us f of x times f of y times f of y equals f of x plus y. Now we want to answer the question, when is this equal to zero? So let's say that is exactly what we want to do here. Well, the left hand side is equal to zero when x times f of y is bigger than or equal to two because that is the input of this function into kind of the most outside part of x here. We know that this guy right here, this f of y is not equal to zero by our third blue condition. So this thing that I've overlined in uh, blue has to satisfy this rule. Okay, but when is the right hand side equal to zero? The right hand side is going to be equal to zero when x plus y is bigger than or equal to two. So we've got this and statement. But now because we know f of y is not zero by this condition, we can divide by f of y. This tells me that x is bigger than or equal to two over f of y. And 
we can subtract y over here. So this means that x is bigger than or equal to two minus y. So let's see where we are. We surmised that f of x was equal to zero if x was on the interval from two to infinity, including two. But we really had a big unknown if x was on the interval from zero to two, including zero, but not including two. But we had this system of inequalities that was given by x is bigger than or equal to two over f of y, and x is bigger than or equal to two over y, and these two inequalities held for all y on the interval from zero to two, and x on the interval from zero to infinity. But now here's where the trick comes in. The fact that these two inequalities both hold for all of these x and y values means that these two guys that I'm squaring in purple have to be the same. That's because x is bigger than or equal to this purple box and it's bigger than or equal to that purple box for all of these values of x and y. That means those two purple boxes are the same. So that gives us a nice equation that we can solve for f of y. And that's two over f of y equals two minus y. But it's not too hard to kind of take that all the way home and see that we get f of y equals two over two minus y. But in order to put it in terms of what we have up here, we're using x as the variable. So that means we could take f of x equal to two over two minus x, and that's for x on this part of the interval that we don't know what the function is yet. So we can take this expression for f and insert it right here. And that finishes the problem, and that's a good place to stop.